Hi guys, so you're subscribed to my channel. You know about all the amazing things you could do for yourself financially. You're incredibly motivated. You're super ambitious, extremely tech savvy, but for one reason or another, you seem to be putting off or delaying the decision to embark on a much healthier and happier financial future. Now, whatever this block may be, I'm going to help you work out what it is, because when we know what it is, we can identify it. And when we've identified it, we can then come up with some solutions to help squash it. I really want you to make the decision to get on board with creating a much healthier and happier financial future today. And what we're going to do is take all those crazy and silly excuses that you've been coming up with year after year and use them to turn this situation around. We're going to use them to channel your motivation, determination and dedication to improving your financial future for good. And for this video, I'm sharing with you the six most popular excuses that I hear as a financial planner talking to everyday people about their finances. Number one is living on credit. And what I mean by living on credit, I'm talking about drowning in debt. You can only survive off borrowed money through credit cards, personal loans, car loans. You have no idea of actually how to save up for something. Now that is an incredibly toxic headspace to be in. Often when I'm coaching people to get out of this type of debt and when I first meet with them, they have this very disrespectful attitude. When, for example, they say I have say $12,000 owing on credit card and they're shopping and they see something they really like, say a $600 dress. They have this attitude, oh, well, I may as well buy it. It doesn't matter. I'm already $12,000 in debt. Another $600 isn't going to count. That is the absolute worst attitude to have. And that is not going to help you in life. And anything that's probably going to pull you deeper into the hole and into a much darker hole as well. Now, if you're one of these people, this is what you need to do. You need to draw a line in the sand. Enough is enough. You should not be living like this. It is simply not healthy financially, but also is not good for your headspace. You need to write down exactly who you owe money to and exactly how much. You need to put repayment plans in place. You also need to live off cash going forward from today. That means that if you've got minimum repayment plans in place, your debt levels will not get any worse. They may plateau or they may very slowly get better, but it means if you can live off cash, you are not creating any more debt in your life and you will start to feel good already. For your headspace, you need to shift that attitude. Instead of thinking, oh, well, it doesn't matter another, you know, thousand dollars on the card or another $200 here or there. That attitude has to now shift. Every time you put $200 on your card or $1,000 on your card, you want to feel really good. You want to know that you are taking the right steps to getting out of that deep, dark hole of debt. And it feels good. It feels empowering. You feel like you're back in control. And then what you do to strengthen that attitude and headspace even more, you think about how good it's going to be when you make that last repayment on that debt and you know, oh, absolutely no money to anyone and any money that you earn, save or create goes purely to yourself. And it's going to feel really good and healthy when you pay for things outright in cash. Number two is you have no idea where your money goes and you're too scared to find out. Well, let me let you in on a little secret and I'm actually going to include myself one of those people. We all downplay how much we really spend, how much it really costs for us to live. And I don't know whether that's because we're wired that way or we just like to fool ourselves. Now, if you're one of those people, you've got to stop burying your head in the sand. The awareness of how much you spend is actually really enlightening and it can help you make some really powerful conscious decisions in your spending habits. This is what you need to do. One, write a budget. Now there's a free budget available from my website. You have to subscribe to the official Sugar Mama website, not just the YouTube channel. You'll get an email confirming your subscription. And once you've confirmed that, you'll then get a welcome email with the link to download the free budget. Also, as mentioned, my app will be available hopefully by end of June. So you'll be able to have a budget app on your phone at all times. However, you must have a budget. You must put in every single expense that you have. And I also suggest that you round everything up to the nearest five, 10 or hundred dollars, depending on how much it costs. You want to make sure that if any of your expenses go up, you can account for that in your budget. Also, you need to review your budget on a regular basis, at least every couple of months, new expenses will sneak in there. And also by reviewing your budget, you're also looking at what you value and you may discover there are things that you're paying for that don't actually serve any purpose or benefit to you. And you, so then you can either completely cut them out or maybe you can just tone them down and not have them in there as regularly. 
The point is understanding and having that awareness of how you spend your money and what on makes helps you make much better decisions and you will feel so much better about yourself and you'll feel in control. And one of the best things about doing your budget and knowing how much money you need to live is you know how much passive income you need to create to be financially free. Excuse number three is you don't earn enough. Well, that's a complete load of crap. Some of the wealthiest people I know have earned the most humble, small salaries, but they've been incredibly respectful of what they've earned. They've put a little bit of what they've earned every day and it is really amassed. I also have met with people who earn a lot of money and have absolutely nothing to show with it. My point is, it's got nothing to do with what you earn, it's what you do with what you earn. So if you're someone like this, my advice to you is to work with what you've got. Take baby steps and smets and set small and achievable goals. That will ensure that you're heading in the right direction and because of the power of compounding interest and starting as early as possible in life, magic will happen. Excuse number four is don't know where to start. The whole world of financial planning, financial services, financial advice, stocks, bonds, bank accounts, savings accounts, stockbrokers, it's incredibly overwhelming and I completely empathize with people who feel like this. It's that whole fight, flight or freeze. But if you're one of these people, it's okay. You don't need to know everything about your finances. Let me give you a good analogy. Say I hurt my back. Now, I don't know what I should be doing to help fix my back, help strengthen my back to prevent damage from happening again. I don't know about all the different bones and muscles and ligaments. I need to go and see a physiotherapist and I will meet with that physiotherapist and they will help tell me what I've done and what I need to fix it. They're the experts in those fields. And just because I might meet with say one physio and I may not like them, that's perfectly fine. I can find another physio. There are a whole world out there of people that can help you and have different attitudes and approaches in the way that they teach and empower you. So my advice to you is to go and seek professional advice. Find someone that can explain to you what you need to do and make sure you understand it. Don't be afraid to shop around either. Get a written financial plan and then make sure you put it into action once you understand and can see all the benefits of implementing that advice. Excuse number five is fear. Now this is all related to self-worth. Whether that be even greed, whether it be fear of failing, whether it be shame, whether it be undeserving, when you understand that this exists within you and you've identified it, that will start to create the shift that will then push you through this, where you can grow from this and understand more about yourself. So when this happens, I want you to acknowledge it. And then a great way of acknowledging it is writing down what you think about yourself. Now, just because you think something about yourself does not mean it's correct, but when you write it down and then you read about it, and then you write down all the reasons why you think that, you start to get a bit of an inkling about how ridiculous you have this, this opinion is of yourself. And this is something that I personally do myself and is the step to help break down these silly, crazy walls that we build up around ourselves for our own self-protection, but actually end up holding us back in life. Excuse number six is ownership. Not ready to face the music, not willing to take ownership of the past financial decisions and the outcomes that have come from those. And an attitude and headspace like that means you're not gonna learn or grow from this and you're gonna miss out on some really valuable golden diamond nuggets of wisdom. Only you can pick yourself up again. Only you are responsible for you. Your past does not dictate your future and you create your own future. So if you're one of these people, now is the time to make that shift. I want you to step up, I want you to grow up and start creating a better financial future. I want you to change your daily habits and shift that negative self-talk to a much more positive and empowering headspace. And I certainly don't want you to settle for averageness. I cannot tell you how many times I have sat with people in my office and I am presenting them their financial advice and they can see and feel all the benefits and of the strategies, the technical ideas, the investment selections, and they're really excited. And they will look to me and they'll say, why didn't I do this years and years ago? And while it's great that you're making the decision today, I don't want you to be the person that makes that decision tomorrow. There is so much potential that exists within you. We live in an abundant universe. There is no limit to what you can achieve. There is so much wisdom, enlightenment, knowledge, joy, bliss to come from making that decision to improve your financial future. Now, I want you to get on that path today and squash any excuses that you might be coming up with. As always, I really hope you enjoy this video. I always love hearing your feedback. And I actually have some very exciting news. 
I'm going to be in London for the week of the 8th of May to the 12th of May. I'm only in London for about five days. I'm filming with a range of other YouTubers based in the UK and I'm so excited. So that means if you've been interested in having a Skype consultation with me, you can actually come and have your meeting with me face to face in the flesh in London. So if you're interested in booking an appointment, I'm going to put all the details in the description box below, as well as an email address to make sure you can book in that appointment before they all the slots and times go. I hope you're having a great week and I hopefully will see you in London if you're based in the UK. Otherwise, I'll see you later in the week for Lifestyle Love. Ciao for now.